Hi everyone, I hope you are all well and reading good books. One thing that I enjoy about watching other booktubers' videos is seeing their book hauls. I love a good book haul and I'm never at a shortage of acquiring books, either through publishers, authors, Goodreads, sales, and other books that I purchase along the way. So today I thought I would share some of my most recent books that I have acquired. For those of you who have watched my videos before, welcome back. For those of you watching for the first time, I am so glad that you have joined us. My name is Jolene from Bookworm Adventure Girl, and I love to read diverse authors, diverse books, diverse genres, and I also love Canadian literature. If this is something that interests you, then please hit subscribe and stick around. Today I will be sharing 12 books by authors with varied backgrounds, and the books are also diverse in genre. I have um, historical fiction, nonfiction, dystopian, adventure, mystery, poetry, and an anthology. Some of the books I am reading in preparation for the Giller Prize, and some I'm reading in preparation for the Toronto International Festival of Authors. To begin, I thought I would start with two webinars that I have recently been able to take part in. The first was with American author Anne Patchett, who I think is very cool uh, because she's not only a writer, but she also owns a bookstore. And her bookstore Parnassus in Nashville is on my list to visit the next time I get down that way. I have a couple of Anne Patchett's books and I have yet to read them, but I do have The Dutch House on my TBR for next month. The Dutch House is historical fiction. It's a family drama about two siblings that takes place at the end of World War II and it covers five decades. With Anne Patch, it was Canadian icon Margaret Atwood. The webinar took place on the day that The Testaments by Margaret Atwood was published in paperback, so I was able to get a signed copy. Now, it's only a flat sign, which means that it's only Margaret Atwood's signature with no inscription, but I was pretty excited about it anyway. Um, the Testaments is the sequel to The Handmaid's Tale, and it's considered dystopian or science fiction. And I'm really looking forward to reading it when we get to it with the Mondays with Margaret series. The second webinar I participated in was with two Canadian authors. Emma Donahue talked about her book, The Pull of the Stars, that has been long listed for the Giller Prize. So it is on my list in preparation for the announcement of the shortlist. And this is another historical fiction that takes place over three or four days in Ireland during the Spanish flu. The second author was Helen Humphreys, who talked about her newest book, Rabbit Foot Bill. This is one of my most anticipated books of 2020, and it is also historical fiction. This book is inspired by a true story that took place in Saskatchewan in the 1940s. Leonard, a young boy, has befriended Rabbitfoot Bill and witnesses a murder. After the murder, Leonard and Rabbitfoot Bill reconnect at the Wayburn Mental Hospital that was known for its LSD experimentation. And Leonard tries to put together what really happened on the day the murder took place. I can't wait to read this and I will leave a link to an article about this book and Rabbitfoot Bill in the description below as well as information about Hugh Lefebvre's book um, about the mental hospital and Hugh Lefebvre, I think, is, I think it's Leonard who is based on Hugh Lefebvre, so something to check out if you're interested. The next book is also by a Canadian author. I picked up Catherine Hernandez's newest novel. You guys know I love diversity and Catherine Hernandez is the epitome of diversity. Hernandez is a queer woman of color, a super talented artistic director and author, she is of Filipino, Spanish, Chinese, and Indian heritage, and she is married into the Navajo Nation. Her newest book, Crosshairs, is also very diverse. It is a dystopian novel that takes place in the very near future. Massive floods are leading to rampant homelessness and devastation, and a government-sanctioned regime uses this as an opportunity to round up communities of color, the disabled, and the LGBTQ plus into labor camps. The hero of the story is Kay. Kay is a queer femme drag performer who is Jamaican Filipino. 
After he loses his livelihood, Kay joins the resistance alongside a transmasculine refugee and a headstrong social worker. And with them is also Beck, a rogue army officer who helps them plan an uprising. I think it's going to be pretty intense. The next author I'm going to share today is a debut author born in Philadelphia, raised in Dubai, studied in Toronto, and now lives in Alexandria. So another author who is all about diversity. I picked up Wash's Praise by Noura Nega in preparation for the Toronto International Festival of Authors that begins at the end of October. This is a novel in verse about a young immigrant woman named, I think it's Cuckoo, maybe Coco? She has a romantic relationship with a married man and then experiences a crisis of faith. It's a short book, about 80 pages, so I'm looking forward to checking it out. Up next is another historical fiction novel that I have been anticipating for a long time. Some have called it an adventure novel, in the way that Stand By Me is an adventure novel. The Tender Land is by William Kent Kruger, and it has been getting a plethora of five-star reviews. I'm really looking forward to seeing what all the hype is about. I have read several books about the residential schools here in Canada, but this book takes place in Minnesota in 1932. This story follows two brothers, Odie and Albert, who are the only white children among the hundreds of American natives at this school. And after a crime is committed, Odie and Albert flee for their lives, and they take with them their best friend, who is mute and a young man of Sioux heritage, and a little girl named Emmy. The book follows their adventures <laughs> during this one summer, and it, we follow them in the places they go and the people they meet. An anthology that I recently discovered is The New Daughters of Africa, edited by Margaret Busby. There was a previous anthology called Daughters of Africa, but I haven't been able to get my hands on that one yet. This book is massive. It's about 1,050 pages. It includes works of over 200 women writers of African descent. It is arranged in chronological order and celebrates a unifying heritage from women all over the globe um, using a wide range of genres, uh, so such as autobiography, memoirs, oral history, letters, diaries, short stories, novels, poetry, humor, drama, essays, speeches. Um, it touches upon the obstacles that female writers of color continue to face as they negotiate issues of race, gender, and class. What I'm looking forward to most about this book is learning about new authors and revisiting some of my favorites. The next book is Creatures by Chrissy Van Meter. This is a debut novel and it is totally an Instagram made me do it book. One of my friends on Instagram raved about this one. And of course it has this mesmerizing cover. Evie is about to get married. Her fiance may be lost at sea. Her mostly absent mother has shown up out of the blue and a dead whale is trapped in the harbor of Winter Island. So there's a lot of things going on in this one. And I guess through all the chaos, we learn of Evie's complicated upbringing. I'm, I'm a bit curious about this one for sure. Please Look After Mom is by South Korean writer Shin Kyung Suk. It follows a family search for their 69 year old missing mother. The story is told in alternating stories between the son, daughter, husband, and the mother herself. So Goodreads tells us that this novel pieces together a life that appears ordinary, but is anything but. This is a mystery of one mother that reveals itself to be the mystery of all our mothers. Um, it's about her triumphs and disappointments and about who she is on her own terms, separate from who she is to her family. Goodreads says that if you have ever been a daughter, a son, a husband, or a mother, Please Look After Mom is a revelation, one that will bring tears to your eyes. So after I read that, as a daughter, I felt like I had to read it. So hopefully it'll be a good one. The tenth book is a nonfiction book, and it's called An Edible History of Humanity by Tom Standage. This book talks about how food has acted as a catalyst for social change, political organization, um, geopolitical competition, industrial development, military conflict, and economic expansion throughout history. The book explains how a series of changes, 
caused, enabled, or influenced by food has helped to shape and transform the societies around the world. And I thought this one would be quite interesting and maybe give me a new perspective on the food we eat and take for granted every day here in the first world countries. Another book that I'm reading in preparation for the Toronto International Festival of Authors is Harlan Coben's mystery thriller, The Boy from the Woods. This will only be the second book I've read by Harlan Coben, um, despite the fact that he's written like a million books. Uh, this book is about a boy who grew up living in the woods and when he is found he is feral and doesn't remember his past. Um, you fast forward 30 years later and now this man um, that they call Wild, he has sought comfort in what he knows and now lives back in the woods. Um, but they come and they ask for help when a young girl goes missing and Wild must uncover secrets before it's too late for the girl and also the world. So the fact that this affects an entire world is kind of what intrigues me about it. And I really enjoyed the previous book I read by Harlan Coben. So I'm hoping that this one is good as well and doesn't disappoint. And finally, the last book from my current book haul is a fiction book called No One Is Coming To Save Us by Stephanie Powell Watts. This book has been described as the Great Gatsby recast in North Carolina. This is another debut novel about an extended African-American family and their colliding views on what the American dream is. I've heard good things about this one, um, so we'll see what, what, what happens. As I mentioned earlier, some of these books are in preparation for the Giller Prize shortlist announcement, which will be on October the 5th. And I did an overview of the long list with my predictions of the shortlist. I will leave a link to that video up top and in the description below. Once the shortlist has been announced, uh, we will see if any of my predictions were correct. And I will do a video of my thoughts on the shortlist and try to make a prediction for the winner. We'll see how it goes before the announcement. And the announcement is on November the 9th. I've also mentioned that some of the books are in preparation for the Toronto International Festival of Authors. That festival, like so many other things in our world right now, will be online this year. The dates are from October 22nd to November the 1st. If you are interested in learning more about the Giller Prize or the Toronto International Festival of Authors, I will leave links in the description below. I will also leave the links to the articles about Rabbit Foot Bill and the book about the mental hospital in the description below. Please let me know if you have read any books uh, on this list or if there are any that interest you. I will look forward to chatting with you in the comments below. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to make every day an adventure.